next topic is approach to liver tumors hepatocellular carcinoma and lidars now from the title it is very clear that i have deliberately clapped two or three topics under a single heading so this is my aims and objectives the sole purpose is to give a basic overview because it is beyond the time limit and my capacity to give a detailed description of all the liver tumors including benign and malignant and that is not my over objective also what i my main objective is from practically particularly from a resident point of view number one is definitely residence exam and second is your day to day work what is my motto is that after listening to this talk you will be able first to answer the basic question that is usually asked in your final md or dnb exam and second you will be able to achieve all at least general liver tumor some cases are complicated as we will go through the slide but basic overview i will give after this talk so this is my aim and objective and this is the disclosure that i have taken some images from internet and i acknowledge the contribution of original authors so coming back to the headline so this is an approach to liver tumors under this heading both benign and malignant if you just classify the liver tumors into two tab <coughs> one is benign and another is malignant now in liver tumor also age wise one is child age group and another is adult age group today's talk is basically focusing on the adult age group i will not focus the pediatric age group today now in adult if i divide it into two portion one is benign another is malignant now for your exam as well as your day to day basis when i am dealing with benign tumor there are basically three entity one is mangioma second is follicular fnh follicular nodular hyperplasia and third is hepatic adenoma and being malignant there is again two type one is primary malignant another is secondary secondary means mates mates from other body parts now in primary only one thing that is the hepatocellular carcinoma if you ask me what is important for an a resident for exam malignant primary hepatocellular carcinoma is much much more important for exam rather than benign one both in paper 4 you know paper 4 the recent advances that includes lidars that i will discuss today it's a long question second also primary hepatocellular carcinoma or hcc the diagnosis and management it also comes as a long question so my goal is to prepare you after this talk that you will be able to write in your exam second my advice to resident is not to listen to their talk passively because lidar is little bit complicated try to actively listen to this so that it is not an another webinar just one or time pass so let's start let's start first in the, the this is the classification gross classification that liver tumor can be divided into two part one is benign another is malignant i have told i deliberately that i will not discuss the child portion today let's focus on the adult portion only the three portion is hemangioma fnh and adenoma and in malignant primary is hepatocellular carcinoma and secondary is mets now among mets the most common usually the most common primary in the hepatocellular carcinoma are from the bowel only bowel itself that example include your large bowel carcinoma example include thyroid carcinoma uh, also that i will discuss <coughs> one by one apart from this liver tumor that i have classified there are one or two three lesions which can mimic the liver tumor that i have included in the, this box which is called regenerative nodule dysplastic nodule and thad thad is transient hepatic attenuation defect they are not actually tumor they are tumor mimic but sometimes it can mimic the tumor so and can create a diagnostic confusion that's why i have included in the separate box so coming before to the t1 itself let's start from the very basic thing what is the protocol you know what is the imaging modality that is available in our hand while we are imaging the liver tumor very basic first is definitely ultrasound usg followed by cross sectional imaging we have ct and mr in our hand now see definitely this is very much clear that ultrasound is the first modality of choice it is not the investigation choice not the investigation choice, but definitely the first investigation we usually perform is ultrasound now second it is followed by something if anything is suspicious on ultrasound we follow it with ct and mr now if there is an exception there is an exception if you follow the lidar's guideline definitely lidar's include both the three lidar's means liver imaging reporting and data system i will discuss in detail in this classes but lidar include ultrasound contrast enhanced ultrasound ct oblique mr apart from this what is the role of ultrasound very specific question very specific answer it is not for diagnosis at all it is only for the surveillance 
there is no role of diagnosis of i repeat this sentence again and again there is no role of diagnosis of hepatocellular carcinoma in ultrasound no role it is just only for surveillance surveillance of which people there are three or four group mentioned in lidar guideline suppose a person is known case of cirrhosis now if you study your medicine in mbbs knowledge cirrhosis there are three classification actually child book a child book b and c all the three classes you should follow regardless of their severity second question is if the person is known case of hepato hepatitis b virus remember i include hepatitis b not c now it is has been specifically mentioned if your region comes under the chronic suppose in the region where you are residing there is a constant prevalence of hepatitis c virus in that region then a person who is infected with hepatocellular virus you can include in surveillance otherwise no need and third is if there is a family history of hepatocellular carcinoma or the primary relative these are the three <coughs> different uh, three specific guidelines they are included in surveillance i also include in your viva question they can ask it is not for less than people 18 years if in general if this suppose a person who is less than 18 years is getting infected with hepatitis b virus should you follow up this special from the 15 years no the answer is no whenever the person gets older than 18 years then you can start surveillance this is a very specific question very specific answer okay second is the contrast enhanced ultrasound to be very very basic we do not do it generally but contrast enhanced ultrasound has a role and it can the role is diagnosis i repeat it is only for diagnosis not for staging or not for any treatment so next next come the the cross-sectional modality that is CT and MR. This is the role of CT and MR. First point, diagnosis, definitely diagnosis. Second is your staging, that means LIDAR staging I am talking about. And third is surveillance. So you can see that both surveillance means that include treatment response. If you are starting any treatment uh, starting, then for surveillance it has a role. So I think I have answered all that the role of different modalities which is used in this hepatocellular carcinoma and related tumors. That is ultrasound, contrast enhanced ultrasound followed by cross-sectional imaging that is CT and MR. Now, if you ask me between CT and MR, which modality is choice? There is no definite answer. The basically in most of that paper they have reviewed till now, both include both comparative imaging that include both CT and both MR. There are advantage that CT include radiation MR doesn't, but there is no clear cut answer which is better than other. That means it's a multi-modality imaging, I can say. Now coming to the protocol itself, it's a very fixed protocol there is nothing change you have to do a dynamic contrast in a city or MR, whatever you choice now as i have already mentioned the timing protocol that is 20 seconds followed by 60 seconds sorry this 20 second 60 second 120 second one hour now see some of the time seconds may vary according to different books i have taken it from a radiographics actually 20 seconds some include 35 to 40 seconds that is called some books say this is late arterial phase some books say arterial portal phase there are some variation but for a standard purpose you can follow that it follow it that is 20 seconds that is an arterial phase followed by 60 seconds portal venous some center include do include yes 30 to 40 35 to 40 seconds some late arterial or arterial portal whatever 120 seconds is equilibrium phase and one hour is delayed now this one hour this one hour delayed it specifically to be taken if you are using a hepato biliary specific contrast media i repeat if you are using hepatobiliary specific contrast media only then there is a role of taking a one hour or two hour delayed frame otherwise there is no such importance now this is a common question if you are asked going for a viva exam that they may include name me terms two specific liver contrast agents that are used that is that is the name this is the gadoinet and demoglumine <coughs> there are one more i think uh, these three are the hepatocellular specific contrast agent that can be used in case of hepatocellular carcinoma now the question is if your center if i repeat if your center does not have the facility of a hepatocellular specific contrast agent as it is the practical aspect should not know should we not do the ct or mr definitely you can do it with the gadolinium then in that case there is no need of taking one hour delayed fee otherwise the protocol is more or less same so coming back first i will discuss the benign one followed by i will take more time for the malignant one so i go back to this slide as you can see that benign one is basically three hemangioma fnh and adenoma in general all the three are benign and if the patient is asymptomatic you do not need to give any treatment i repeat you do not to give any treatment no follow-up at all no follow-up at all 
only if the patient gets symptomatic. Now the question is, what is the symptom? Suppose a, a patient has been diagnosed <coughs> FNH or adenoma, which is usually more common in female. All the benign tumor, as you can see, that hemangioma, FNH, and adenoma, all the three are more prevalent in women compared to men. Now see, if a woman in a reproductive age group have been diagnosed with FNH and adenoma and after four or five months he, this patient came with severe abdominal pain then you can have a suspicion that that FNH or that adenoma then can be a intratumoral hemorrhage or intratumoral rupture otherwise otherwise usually these benign tumors are generally asymptomatic or in extreme cases due to the <coughs> due to the <coughs> Capsular stretch, there may be a vague abdominal pain if it is the subcapsular in location. Otherwise, usually there is no that much of symptom and, symptom and usually diagnosed incidentally on ultrasound. So, coming back to first, coming to the cavernous hemangioma, as it is the most common benign tumor in the liver. See, this is very, very important topic. Why hemangioma? Because in viva if any people ask you tell me one character of a hemangioma you have to i have marked in red color you have to send sell this line by line word by word that is it's a peripheral nodular interrupted enhancement on arterial phase each and every word has its own importance as you can see because each and every line has a differential diagnosis with other tumors why if you ask me why the importance of interrupted arterial enhancement I will tell you that it helps me to differentiate with the hypervascular metastasis. If you see that a hand hypervascular metastasis, it will also show you a peripheral ring enhancement. That 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 ring enhancement will be a continuous. Whereas in case of hemangioma, the peripheral contrast arterial enhancement will not be a continuous. It will be an interrupted. So this is a differential point. Second point very commonly asked in viva what are the causes of hypervascular metastasis in liver why this question asked because most of the metastasis which you see in the liver is hypotense or hypo enhancing compared to liver parenchyma and that's why it is well visualized in the portal venous phase not in the arterial phase but there are some tumors from where the if metastasis occur in liver they are hypervascular their example include renal cell carcinoma example include melanoma example include thyroid so this three at least renal cell carcinoma melanoma and thyroid and sometimes also osteosarcoma if so then this three at least renal cell carcinoma melanoma and thyroid they are hypervascular metastasis these, these, these two questions you should remember now coming to that I, as i see so, so that every every liver imaging starts with ultrasound although ultrasound is not an investigation choice but we get some idea that there is something which i have to follow so start with ultrasound in case of hemangioma if you see that it's a homogeneously hyper -equic, <laughs> if you see that hemangioma is a homogeneous and hyper equic hyper equic means that it's a white on ultrasound and it is usually well defined so homogeneously hyper equic mass now the contradiction is that i have told you that on arterial phase in contrast in ct on arterial phase it showed a vivid contrast enhancement that is peripheral nodular interrupted discontinuous whatever arterial enhancement but on doppler if you put a doppler usually there is no internal vascularity on ultrasound so two point that is one is it is homogeneously hyper equic and usually well defined margin and second is no internal vascularity seen third point any this is a general characteristics of any mass not specific to hemangioma if this hemangioma is in close proximity to any of the hepatic vein then due to the mass effect it can avert or it can displace a hepatic vein that's a general characteristic of any of the mass not specific hemangioma but i just mentioned so for ultrasound you will see an hyper equic without any internal vascularity now second if you do a ct scan now i already told that ct we have to follow this, this protocol i will discuss everything in this protocol only that is the contrast enhanced dynamic ct scan which include non contrast enhanced ct followed by arterial followed by portal venous and delayed phase i already told that arterial arterial phase and this is the <coughs> exact answer peripheral nodular discontinuous as re inter or interrupted enhancement which is followed by next point which is followed by centripetal filling that way it will fill homogeneously towards center in portal venal phase and the, the most important that it will retain the contrast i repeat in will retain the contrast in delayed phase delayed phase means approximately two to three minutes according to the protocol because sometimes it be center to center very 
can take at 5 minute or 10 minute also but the simple thing is that it will enhance in the arterial phase and it will retain the contrast in portal venous and delayed phase centripetal filling and portal vein and delayed phase why because this this helps you to differentiate with the other two one that is your fnh and your hepatic adenoma both two will also enhance homogeneously in arterial phase but they will become isodense to liver in delayed phases that means they will not retain the contrast this is the difference so that's why i did just say key peripheral nodular interrupted contrast enhancement followed by centripetal filling towards the center followed by delayed persistence or enhancement this is the full answer of a typical imaging feature of cavernous hemangioma second just this is some more specific that it will follow the contrast <coughs> density of the abdominal aorta this is more or less same now what is flash filling hemangioma flash filling hemangioma usually benign and very small size you just put a contrast and suddenly that is vivid enhancement usually it is seen in the small size hemangioma this is called flash filling hemangioma coming to giant hemangioma giant hemangioma what is the giant hemangioma giant hemangioma if it is the greater than in 4 cm in size then that hemangioma called giant hemangioma or sometimes they call also atypical hemangioma why the atypical hemangioma i told you usually it is homogeneous it is homogeneous if it is small in size but when it is giant then it become heterogeneous why it become heterogeneous because of two or three reason suppose there is intertumoral hemorrhage suppose there is fibrosis inside so usually that in that cases or mixed white denervation it become heterogeneous and in that case imaging may <coughs> vary from the typical one now second question is if there is usually the imaging pattern of cavernous hemangioma is such typical that you do not need mr you do not need tissue biopsy but if in diagnostic dilemma in atypical cases definitely in atypical cases should you go for tissue examination the answer is yes if even if there is a risk of hemorrhage you can try a cone needle biopsy under coaxial whatever thing but the answer is yes if there is diagnostic dilemma and it requires active management then you can go for tissue biopsy although there is definitely risk of hemorrhage Usually, I told that it doesn't require is the TB imaging features of hemangioma such typical in CT that it doesn't require to follow up with MR imaging. But if anybody asks you the question, what is the most specific imaging investigation of choice for your hemangioma? The answer will be MR. It's not CT. It is MR, which is the most specific. Now, the question two question I will not de go detail. Just the key points which you have to remember for MR that is the T two bulb sign. That means it the hemangioma even in on non contrast mr t2 weighted imaging it is vividly white i mean cystic and uh, white t2 hyper intense the sign is called is light bulb sign just a question that also pheochromocytoma in case of adrenal it also shows the light bulb sign this is a question you know so in t2 this is very typical that it's a light bulb sign mr is the most definite <coughs> specific investigation of choice <laughs> Yeah. <coughs> MR is the most investigation of choice. Yeah. Next, I already discussed the small, large is uh, difference between the hemangioma and hypervascular metastasis. <coughs> is that the metastasis will show contrast wash out in delayed phases but as i told that hemangioma will retain contrast in portal venous and delayed phases so with this i think i finished the first topic that is hemangioma and it requires no treatment the, this is an example of a case see start from t2 weighted imaging this is the vividly bright or i told the light bulb sign second is the t1 t1 usually hypo just see the uh, in the arterial phase you see that there is an enhancement there is an enhancement but it is not a continuous thing it is not a continuous thing it is a discontinuous so peripheral interrupted or discontinuous contrast enhancement followed by see in portal phase see this portion is started filling that is centripetal filling in the portal venous phase followed by delayed phase see it has retained contrast con contrast that means hyper intense compared to the liver parenchyma so this is a typical feature of a cavernous hemangioma and it is the most common tumor in liver benign most common benign sir if it is benign then it don't require any management sir giant hole sir intertumoral pain hoy bleed hoy then sir
रिप्रोडक्टिव एज ग्रुप so focal nodular hyperplasia before going to the imaging tele one just key point for pathological that actually focal nodular hyperplasia it's not a tumor it is basically if you see histologically these are normal liver tissue normal hepatocyte which has become proliferated you know it is a hyperplastic response of a hepatic parenchyma to a pre existing avm arteriovenous malformation this is the behind theory this is the <coughs> genetic pathological theory they are giving the mane the main important thing is the under tissue slide the focal nodular hyperplasia may mimic a normal hepatocyte that is the point so if there is sometime radio pathology correlation if sometime fail then we have to rely on the imaging more than the pathology that is the, that is the only importance to know this thing now coming the focal nodular hyperplasia just the key point you know that is the key point is central scar it has a central scar <coughs> this is i am not telling that this central scar is present in every cases of focal nodular hyperplasia but but if it is present central scar then it is very much specific for the the case is focal nodular hyperplasia just a question the side question for the central scar also you can see on oncocytoma in case of kidney tumor anything anyway ultrasound ultrasound it is very non specific why it is non specific because it depend upon the <coughs> content of the content of the uh, tissue itself that's why it may be sometime hyperechoic or sometime isoechoic to liver but the scar tissue is usually not seen on the ultrasound it is better depicted on cross sectional imaging that is ct and mr so if i come to the ct <coughs> it is showing at definitely arterial enhancement homogeneous but it is not as compared to the hemangioma the hemangioma was peripheral enhancement but in case of focal nodular disease the whole thing will enhance that is the homogeneous as enhancement this is the in the arterial phase but the different main second difference in in portal vena or delayed vena it will not retain the contrast it will start excreting and it become iso to the liver that is the difference with the hemangioma which is retaining the concept so this is the thing the portal venous phase equilibrium to the and return to the normal coming to the scar tissue the speciality about the scar tissue definitely the scar tissue first is if you do an mr if you do a mr the scar will appear hyper intense on t2 this is one one important point that is have to remember second point scar tissue that this scar tissue usually usually it do not enhance on the arterial phase but sometimes scar tissue do show delayed enhancement the whole rest of the tumor will not show enhancement on delayed phase that will excrete and become iso but the scar tissue only it may show delayed enhancement but not the early arterial enhancement this is the main key point which you have to remember focal nodular hyperplasia now the exam question come if you have to differentiate between the focal nodular hyperplasia versus hepatic adenoma come because both are similar feature and it is becoming difficult then comes the role of the liver specific the liver specific <coughs> contrast agent why thing is as i told that follicular sorry <coughs> focal nodular hyperplasia is just a hepatocyte that's why it will uptake the liver specific contrast agent and it will excrete that's why if you put liver specific contrast agent and take an one hour image you will see that fnh has enhanced but the hepatocellular adenoma do not enhance that is the role of a liver specific contrast agent in focal nodular hyperplasia otherwise if you just remove the remove the portion then two thing will help, help that is the central scar otherwise more or less the imaging feature is same with the hepatic adenoma and it sometimes can create diagnostic dilemma so i have tell already that liver specific contrast agent this is a brand name evoist and multihens that two are available and uptake of contrast in excretion into the biliary system i told the central scar t2 hyperintense with delayed enhancement if also t2 if it is asymptomatic no treatment With this, we also finish the second topic that is focal nodular. Okay. 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 Okay.
This is radiological term because we see a uh, hypo dense in city that is why we say that it is a scar this is not a true scar it is not a scar acha acha it is not a true scar hai na but fiber level of scar is a true scar true scar to you know that it is hyper intense acha agar flc scar kokhono enhance kore na ki delayed enhance kore chilo bolechi ni ha ha bollam bollam flc ta kokhono enhance kore na fiber level ta kore na ha कारो सेंट्रल स्कार Hence, and this is an arterial phase that the whole whole <coughs> tumor is enhancing, but the uh, the scar is not enhancing. That is the point. <coughs> Sorry. And in the hepatocytic liver specific organ, you see that the tumor enhances. This is that you have to differentiate from the adenoma. <laughs> Coming to third portion, hepatic adenoma. It is also common in the young age group, reproductive. And the two important risk factor is OCP. If the young woman use OCP, then this is it is a risk factor. And in case of men, in case of men, if body is taking anabolic steroid, then it also puts puts into the risk. And in case of child, if any child is a <coughs> known case of glycogen storage disorder, then he is in a risk. This is the three risk factor in the three different age group or population. Now again. In ultrasound, the echogenicity varies depending upon the fat content. Suppose if the fat content of this hepatic adenoma is more as compared to the liver, then it can appear hyperechoic in ultrasound and reverse in CT. CT is more hypo <coughs> dense, but totally it depends upon the fat content that hepatic adenoma. And second thing, you have to sometimes we have to compare with the associated liver suppose liver is also fatty liver then sometimes to compare whether whether the intratumoral fat is more or liver fat is more if the intratumoral fat is more compared to the liver then it can appear hyperechoic like in ultrasound anyway and third point is usually hepatic adenoma generally average size average size of the hepatic adenoma is on the larger aspect compared to imangioma and fnh it is usually 3 to 4 cm usually and that's why there is a chance of increase of hemorrhage or rupture again the dynamic contrast in an ct that thing is in arterial phase definitely enhances markedly and uniformly during the arterial phase and portal venous pen and delayed phase the same thing that it will isoattenuate with the, the liver the thing catch is that there may may be an capsule surrounding capsule but it is not always present otherwise i told that the imaging features of that hepatic adenoma and fnh is more or less very close in very close that's why the role of the hepato biliary specific contrast agent is there that it will not uh, enhance on the hepatocellular expansion and second is i told that the intratumoral fat if there is intratumoral fat deposition 
then the liver fat specific jo sequence hai, that is uh, that is the in phase and opposed phase there will be signal drop or if the amount of fat is well then we can also t2 t2 fs fat suppressed image so this is an example of that typical case of an hepatic adenoma can you see that hepatos this is the liver specific contrast region and it has not enhanced otherwise more or less same that it will enhance in the arterial phase and followed by iso2 <coughs> to liver parenchyma in the delayed on portal phases so this is with this we finished the more or less a gross overview of the benign tumor these are the more team coming to this is just a <coughs> diagrammatic or algorithm representation for the quick memory that is the hemangioma fnmh adenoma the same thing has written otherwise no nothing and third is metastasis and hepatocellular carcinoma i will ask you let me come now now we are going shifting to the malignant one that more we worry some about the malignant rather than the benign one see before starting even starting the hepatocellular carcinoma two or three point to be very very clear in our mind that is the risk factor of hepatocellular carcinoma i have told in the beginning only that we will suspect a patient of hepatocellular carcinoma only in the background of cld only in the background of hepatitis b or c and third if the family history of hcc is there otherwise usually generally hepatocellular carcinoma in a non serotic liver is not that common everything can happen that's a separate issue but incidence wise hepatocellular carcinoma always or more or commonly used in a pre existing liver disease that is a ciliary hepatitis b virus or a family history of hepatocellular carcinoma second point if you compare the role of imaging <coughs> that is very very important for example also in case of brain also you know uh, apart from liver also in case of brain tumor also when i imaging imaging plays a very important role in brain tumor also because always we are not being able to take a brain invasive brain biopsy we have to solely rely on our imaging features similarly in case of hcc after the amendment of 2018 lidar came into the <coughs> play imaging plays a very important role because because in lidar 5 i will to discuss in lidar 5 it if you mark or stamp any lesion at the lidar 5 then there is no need of a biopsy or don't need of a tissue diagnosis so upon the after the 2018 <coughs> the lidar came into the market and that's why the importance of imaging in hepatocellular carcinoma has become much more important rather than the previous so let's start with the hepatocellular carcinoma one by one just a thing yeah yeah so first the base first the basic basic the basic image before coming to the lidar but the basic imaging finding of the hepatocellular carcinoma is it is enhances vividly in the early arterial phase in a 20 second phase are vividly enhancing something lesion you in a background of cld your first dd will be an hepatocellular carcinoma that means you have to rule out of heart hepatocellular carcinoma second thing which i have learned that is even if you are doing an ultrasound in a patient of a cld or in a patient of a cirrhosis then you have to very very careful to look or to detect the suspicious nodule that that is the importance of actually surveillance you have to keep you have to pick it in early phases otherwise if once you diagnose a hepatocellular carcinoma in lidar 5 the only treatment that remains is hepatocellular transplant uh, only some recent interviews that is <coughs> trans arterial chemo embolism has came play into the role but if it is gross then only option left that is the liver transplant that's why that is the role of a surveillance that we have to pick it up in an early state <laughs> যা করবে তাকে তাকে দেওয়া হবে 
हाइपो इन इट इज आईसो it is not come under the criteria it has to be has to be hypo compared to be the liver parenchyma then only you can take call it and wash out so i repeat again that in early arterial phase hepatocellular carcinoma will show a vivid contrast enhancement followed by rapid wash out in portal venous space and it the lesion will become um, hypo compared to the surrounding liver that is the full description of an hepatocellular carcinoma now <coughs> now comes the if you if, if you just follow the if you if you just follow the spectrum of a hepatocellular carcinoma then this one or two thing sorry this then this one or two thing do come there is the regenerative nodule now see sometime this regenerative sometime this re regenerative nodule will can uh, create a diagnostic uh, confusion with hepatocellular carcinoma but the thing is that regenerative nodule usually seen in liver disease which are more or less vascular origin not, not primary for example that bartcherry syndrome we commonly found that uh, degenerative nodule in bartcherry syndrome the, and uh, this uh, for imaging wise in regenerative nodule this t2 i have marked this t2 sometimes it becomes sclerotic nodule no regenerative not sclerotic nodule so this sclerotic nodule will become t1 t2 hypo t1 t2 hypo this is this is one feature of degenerative nodule this is number one and number two is the enhancement pattern is will not be that amount of vivid compared to that hepatocellular carcinoma hepatocellular carcinoma is vividly enhances on early arterial phase but the regenerative nodule do not enhance like that okay third thing is the capsule or some body say it's a pseudo capsule that's a uh, a feature of a hepato ancillary feature of a hepatocellular carcinoma that there may be a thin or discontinuous as capsule which may show progressive delayed enhancement anyway sorry The, 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 these are the features these are the cases where we found commonly the regenerative nodule one is bartcherry myeloproliferative or vascular usually in the vascular pathology here yeah. these are the these are the some examples of hyper hypervascular metastasis renal cell carcinoma thyroid melanoma <coughs> these also enhances uh, vividly in the hypervascular this on the arterial phase but the enhancement pattern is varies with the acc the typical description i will come just in a typical description of the hepatocellular carcinoma is i have omit that time specifically that is the non aph the term is very specific it's a non h aph that means is non rim enhancement arterial phase hyper enhancement but it will be non rim enhancement i will just discuss it during the lyrats actually so but the metastasis usually show the rim rim pattern enhancement rim pattern enhancement this is the metastatic and non rim pattern of enhancement of arterial phase that is in case of hepatocellular carcinoma but just for viva question they are asked that ne so this is this is a k, k example of a hypervascular metastasis as you can see that this is a peripheral rim enhancement with a central necrotic multiple lesions in the liver so this is a case of a metastasis and the primary you have to search for neuroendocrine renal cell carcinoma thyroid melanoma cardiac carcinoma anyway pitfalls i will discuss it later pitfalls <coughs> coming back to lidars for main focus of today is lidars lidars i have already told that in include this four modalities of imaging that is ultrasound contrast and ultrasound ct mr told already cirrhosis non cirrhosis these are the risk factors hepatitis b virus family history you have to screen 
this is the lidar guideline i've told already this ultrasound is only used for the surveillance contrast in the analog you can for diagnosis but no staging only the staging diagnosis as well as response ct and mr ct that means ct and mr is the investigation of choice in case of hepatocellular carcinoma now coming at the lidar specific from now onwards i will discuss the lidar onward now see these are the vector these are 11 types of this that is a need to standardize the reporting for hepatocellular that's why the uh, lidar I, I just 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 go back to that uh, you know we have to I mean, imaging wise to 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 just compare the virus with lidar you know there are three or four radiological imaging and reporting system we should remember actually for there are many but for exam purpose i think first by rats second come the tyrats third definitely rats and on more new than the pirates that prostate these four imaging reporting and data system i think we our resident should be well versed with the thing although there are so many right there is cat rats for coronary artery disease there is lung rats in rat for nodal limb nodal staging but these are not that much important for resident point of view for resident for point of view virus tyrats lyrats and pirates these four are important now see i just for correlating just for correlating because it increases our memory power that's why i just start from virus actually if you because virus first come into the market actually so see virus i start from from the six six is a biopsy tissue biopsy proven tissue that is virus six virus five is more than 95 percent chance of malignancy this is virus five virus four it's a again divided into a b c but the range varies 3% to 95%. This is virus 4. Virus 3 is most, we are advised not to rampantly write virus 3 for our own safety because virus 3 is indeterminate. This is 50% benign, 50% malignant. So it is advised that you should not use rampantly virus 3 to safeguard yourself. Virus 2 in the 100% benign. Virus 2 is 100% benign. Virus 1 is negative that you do not find any lesion. And virus 0 is technically difficult. When you have to repeat the you know, technically poor exam. This is the virus 6. Just compare it with the LIDAR. LIDAR means 0 to 9. LIDAR is data NC. NC means again technically poor, <coughs> not classifiable. You have to repeat the imaging. This is the technical factor. Now data LIDAR 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. LIDAR 1 you are stamp it that it's benign 100 percent benign there is no doubt in it two it is definitely benign you are sure much about but less than 100 percent sure then you will put it at lidar 3 <coughs> lidar 3 against similar cheese 50 50 you are not sure it is 50 percent benign 50 percent malignant lidar 4 chance is becoming more in malignancy but you are not 100 percent sure that it is malignant in this actually this there is, i will discuss actually and five is 100 percent malignant what happened in lidar 4 actually in this way there are this there are cases that it is definitely malignant but not hepatocellular carcinoma there are some actually i will coming when lidar is aim yeah. so but it is malignancy that is i am sure but i cannot confidently say that it is hepatocellular carcinoma then it is coming actually lidar 4 or aim no now coming to the standardized why the importance of early because there are some specific terminology provided in lidar lexicon and it is advisable that when a radiology is reporting in hepatocellular carcinoma you have to use that words only you have no place to create your own word or no you, your own phrase you have to use the phrase which is given there that is not aph we have to use, use this word only that is non limb pattern artery of phase hyper enhancement because there are these are vague terms which we use in this <coughs> report but they are saying you should not use this and just use non aphp any so this is a major feature actually uh, yeah actually my goal is I just one to, uh, key this is the table usually we show the table and just <coughs> dictated it showing in front of it but as a resident you have to remember actually to be very easy you have to mark up this table huh? you have to mark it and if i just show you in this table this is the passive learning you have to take a paper or piece of paper and you have to write one or two three times only then you it get imprinted into your brain otherwise otherwise if you do not revise it before your exam you will not be able to copy it in your exam copy because th this is difficult more or less i feel that this is difficult to remember anyway yeah. for, for anyway for this uh, uh, timing let's focus on the <laughs> diagnostic tools here yeah. first is any lesion just uh, just any feature first let us divide it into the contrast suppose i put a contrast you know then first divide it into two portions whether it is sorry 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 huh. Huh. Yeah. whether it is aphe or non aphe you know 
भाग তারপরে তিনটে এডিশনাল থ্রি এডিশনাল ক্রাইটেরিয়া সো অনলি ইফ ইট ইজ নন ডিম আটেরিয়াল ফ্যান্সমেন্ট অ্যান্ড নো এডিশনাল ক্রাইটেরিয়া ইজ দেয়ার দেন উই পুট ইট ইন এল আর ফোর বাট এনি অফ দ্য এডিশনাল ক্রাইটেরিয়া ইজ প্রেজেন্ট এবং দিস থ্রি থিং দ্যাট ইজ এনআনসিং ক্যাপসুল নন পেটিফেলার ওয়াশ অ্যান্ড থ্রেসেল গোল দেন দ্য লিজন কামস এল আর ফাইভ এল আর ফাইভ দিস ইজ দ্য দিস কলাম দিস ইজ গ্রেটার দেন টোয়েন্টি নাও কাম ইন দ্য টেন টু নাইনটিন টেন টু নাইনটিন জাস্ট অ্যান্ড নো এডিশনাল ক্রাইটেরিয়া ডেফিনেটলি ওয়ান স্টেপ minus so lr4 to lr3 and 10 to 19 plus you have two major criteria two major criteria uh, then they have directly put it into the five this column is lr4 or lr5 depending on the three additional criteria see only lr4 or lr5 either one one criteria only present one additional criteria which is the one if the enhancing capsule that means capsule will is present then lr4 or, or but if non peripheral washout and threshold board even then lr5 that means they are putting non peripheral washout and threshold board much more important rather than the capsule because capsule sometimes in some paper they say not a two capsule it's a pseudo capsule so that means the importance of a capsule is little bit less compared to washout and threshold board that is the one that i have to just say so simple key 20 lr4 just keep a minus one given the lr3 with this three if the two features of additional go it directly promoted to the lr5 but if one additional features come it may either go lr4 or lr5 lr4 if the capsule is there that means it is lr4 but apart from capsule any other the two one of the two come the lr5 next if the lesion is less than 10 mm man bahut chote very small lesion 10 mm lesion then there is no question of lr5 i have not put the lr5 i just only put lr3 or lr4 so only less than 10 mm non rim type enhancement no other thing put it lr3 but any of the additional criteria just increase one by one LR, by lr4 but never never lr5 lr5 a column hobe na because the size is too small coming to now <coughs> no aphc that means the rim pattern enhancement may be seen there in that category first thing clear for remember that there will be no lr5 kono lr5 puti korbo na er modhe either it is lr3 or lr4 er modhe variable now greater than 20 mm no additional criteria i will put it lr3 any of the additional criteria i will put it lr4 like that less than if the size is too small then i need two additional criteria to told it lr4 so less than 20 mm two additional criteria i will put it lr4 either no additional or one additional criteria this is lr3 मोटामुटी स्पेशल lr m and lr iv lr coming to the lr m first then i come to lr iv lr m means this is malignant i am sure i am sure but this is a particular occurrence and that is i am not 100% sure and if you see the features of lr m this are more or less opposite to the hepatocellular carcinoma hepatocellular carcinoma ki chilo the non rim pattern of aph ekhane ki ache rim pattern of aph okhane ki chilo je total wash out that is non peripheral wash out ekhane ki ache peripheral wash out this is contradictory to the hepatocellular carcinoma but these features are again malignancy that's why this is malignant 
but not hepatocellular carcinoma. I have to consider another malignancy. Maybe it is mates, whatever. So, rim pattern of particle portal of hyperdendron enhancement, peripheral washout, delayed central enhancement, target. This is the targeted lesion. These are features of LRM. This is 100% malignant, but not specific for ACC. LRPIV, this is one or more or less specific feature. That is, if the portal vein is dilated, there was some size category greater than 18 mm, I think. Size category, it is portal vein is dilated, and you are seeing tumor vein. Basically, tumor thrombus. In simple language, tumor thrombus. Portal vein is dilated, and you are seeing the tumor material within the portal vein. Then, then definitely there is a high chance of it becoming a hepatocellular carcinoma. Even if you the line is actually from taking lidar, even if non-visualization, you are not able to find the mass on ultrasound, but you are seeing a portal vein which is dilated in the background of CLD. This is very very highly suspicious that the case is an hepatocellular carcinoma. So the portal vein. Sir, what kind of portal vein type mentioned? Sir, mass. Okay, sir. Portal vein. Okay, sir. Portal vein. Sir, what are the other things? Sir, portal vein. Sir, sir, what is hepatic vein? Sir, hepatic vein. Hepatic vein. Come, sir. Sir, that's the basic common. No, I'm not saying that's common. Sir, what is the common which vein? Channel. IBC. Intrahepatic IBC. So these are already discussed liver specific contrast agent less than 18 years. This is not applicable. This I have told. So these are just I'm repeating more major criteria: non-peripheral atherosclerosis, non-peripheral washout, enhancing gap through size, threshold growth, and just growth. One or two things, just technical factor. Earlier I have told you. थिंगल फेज सो मैं এটা অ্যাডভাইস করা হয় ডু নট টেক দা মেজারমেন্ট ইন আর্টেরিয়াল ফেজ টেক ইট ইন ডিলেট ফেজ টু অ্যাভয়েড দা পেরি লিজিয়নাল সামটাইম হল এনহ্যান্সমেন্ট হয় তো সেই জন্য একটু ডিলেট ফেজ হ্যাঁ করোন ফেজ করোন ফেজ সো সেই জন্য একটু ডিলেট ফেজে মেজারমেন্টটা মনে হয় টেক অলওয়েজ দা লংগেস্ট ডাইমেনশন डेफिनेटলি ডি হ্যাভ টু ইনক্লুড দা ক্যাপসুল এন্ড ইন দা লেটারাল ফেজ দ্যাট দ্যাট দ্যাটস দা অবজারভেশন সাইজ ইট ইজ সাইজ নট এ ভলিউম মানে ইটস এজ টু এজ This is just example. Meaning, uh, pre-contrast, nothing is there. Arterial phase, uh, hyper enhancement, portal phase, very difficult to distinguish because I saw to liver. But in delayed phase, definitely hypo. This is the it has to be an has to be hypo compared to the surrounding liver parenchyma. Only then I can tell it that it is criteria filling the washout, and this is more or less ACC. टेबल Thus, there is reduction of the size, undistorted vessel, iron content, more iron content, T1, T2, hypo, have more iron content in the mass. Then these are cirrhotic nodules, not hepatic cellular carcinoma. These are some features which suggest benignity rather than malignant. And these are three. These are the lesions. These are problems. These are ancillary. These are not major features. These are not also present in every cases. But these are some additional criteria which is if present. Raises the chance of liver stroke. So this one is restricted diffusion. It is in general any any malignant lesion show diffusion restriction. It is not specific to the hepatocellular carcinoma. So if if, if diffusion is present, it, it increases the risk of malignancy, but it is non-specific. T2 hyper intense. That usually the hepatocellular carcinoma is T2 hyper intense. Of definitely T2 fat cell hyper intense. And if it is but if the hyper intense lesion is even hyper intense more than spleen then you should consider not hepatocellular carcinoma it may be a cyst also so always try to compare it with spleen it should be hyper intense but not than more than spleen if it is more than hyper intense than spleen then cyst also t2 hyper intense cyst can also occur third is these are these images actually are more than this 
description the images are said explanatory but, but the appearance of nodular nodule or tumoral fat the this appearance is r money images are explanatory you have to remember this image that if this nodule is nodule is present then it increases the chance of hepatocellular carcinoma but or depending i always tell that depending on this additional criteria we can upgrade the lidars but never downgrade i'm just taking on the lid in this this nodular nodule this mosaic pattern mosaic architecture that that intertumoral fat if if, if intertumoral fat is in more favor of hepatocellular carcinoma yeah, so fat suppress image by in phase opposed phase if you are finding that there is an evidence of fat then it increases the chance of hepatocellular carcinoma but all these are ancillary lidar say yes these are these are i mean last slide i bolbo sir these features i mean lidar say i bolchi dekhi ei image dekho these ancillary features you can use it to lidar to upgrade from lr1 up to lr4 uh -huh. you will not use this criteria to upgrade lr4 to lr5 never you will not use this lr4 to lr5 you cannot upgrade downgrade definitely you can go but not upgrade you can only upgrade this using this criteria up to lr4 not lr5 so okay. this x step yes by one very one step and just these are the three features that it improve the rate of detection and increase the confidence but it is not itself by the major criteria this i just want to tell don't and if you are not sure whether it is well, then do not use there or it also means do not use this answer criteria just based on addition major criteria you just classify like that if you are in doubt because these images there are not such book description actually these are you know you have to image memory this, this is the nodulin nodulin appearance this is the uh, mosaic architecture appearance or this is the intertumoral fact there is not such definition actually book line now almost finished lidars the second just i won't told it the key a lidars uh, the role of ultrasound can i put in general practice ultrasound lidar it is ultrasound i told only uh, not for diagnosis not for it is only for screening they just give us very simple you know the uh, ultrasound 1 2 3 right the three the three is positive means we have to suspicious <coughs> ultrasound is there actually have a image actually also this this is sorry this is the actually the <coughs> image he ultrasound 1 2 or 3 ultrasound 1 means it is negative i do not need any observation Achha. observation criteria bolte bolo we have to usually if you are any thing you are thinking it's a suspicious but not hepatocellular carcinoma that is two then you should put an surveillance six month interval they tell that three to six months interval or roughly six months six month interval you can follow up now what by what imaging modality you will follow up they are told keep firstly definitely ultrasound is the most imaginable choice but it is also included but it, that in some centers the, because ultrasound is a image dependent operator dependent and sometimes the liver becomes so serotic that we can sometimes it become isodense i the serotic nodule can become isodense isoequic to the liver so if needed or highly suspicious you can screening also by ct or mr otherwise if it is okay then you can screen it or follow up it with ultrasound or if needed through by ct or mr Uh, the, uh, the, man, uh, this this table is, is the they have just put a <coughs> reference images also suppose for example ultrasound 1 us 1 means negative no need of follow mm -hmm. this is simple case of cirrhosis that is advanced cirrhosis let it zoom kore dite better hoy <coughs> example this is advanced cirrhosis with ascites this is the liver margin irregular ascites present ache but kono focal observation lesion pain kono focal liver so i can put it and us ultrasound category 1 and i don't need to follow up second acha ultrasound us2 us2 in simple term that it is suspicious but not that much that's why i put it at us2 and i will follow it up with 3 to 6 month interval that means even i require if required i do not need any cross section for the ct or mr yes sir these are non contrast contrast enhanced ultrasound is for diagnosis but this surveillance is non contrast i am not diagnosing anything in ultrasound i am just screening it the whether there is anything present or not that's why that is the role of ultrasound it's just for screening screening purpose so ultrasound 1 negative no need to follow up ultrasound 2 is there is something suspicious but not that much that is it requires extensive imaging or extensive follow up that's why i am not i am limiting myself to <coughs> ultrasound only and follow up at a interval of 3 to 6 month or 6 month i usually i am not going for the ct or mr imaging if i am putting ultrasound to the lesion is also okay it is see that this is small so inside that means not less than 10 mm 10 mm less than 10 mm in the side and the criteria is this 
the, you can see that there is a suspicious hyper hyper echo nodule in ultrasound one you are finding no nodule second in ultrasound two in a background of cld you are finding a nodule and that's why every nodule in a bind, bind feature in a background of cld is suspicious that is ultrasound two and but i'm not putting it into further ct or mr as the lesion is less than 10 mm i just following up in a serial interval three or six months roughly six months coming to ultrasound three us three definitely that is the portal vein thrombus is there architectural distortion is there out of the side lesion is greater than 10 mm then it is definitely suspicious and i will follow it up with further ct and mr that is the role of ultrasound 10 mm is less than 10 mm portal vein thrombus is there or architectural distortion is there last parenchymal distortion resulting parenchymal distortion is there if you have any further ct and mr last point is the parenchymal distortion is there if you have any further ct and mr स्क्रीनिंग This is uh, actually the uh, further management. This ultrasound lidars one or two benign. I am not bothered about that. Lidars if I am giving lidars three, then at the interval I am follow for three to six months. Lidars four and lidars five. Definitely lidars five. I am bolded this is the biopsy. No need of biopsy. Go straight for intervention or management. Lidars four type two. Who have to diagnostic dilemma is. They tell that first do a multidisciplinary meeting and followed by if negative do for biopsy. I think I had in practical purpose. I have we have to do a biopsy tissue biopsy get done. But tissue biopsy get done. Otherwise, LR five to bolle da. Just me two thing one two three. I mean, one two that set totally benign. I mean benign. Okhane to I mean. So, what was the three thing? Three thing. Our goal for that start with three thing. Three thing. Three thing. Three year interval is follow up. Six months. Three to six months. I mean follow up. Follow up. Ah, just highly suspicious. What's it? I mean, one or two. Sure, that's what's it? ताला मैं फादर सीटी हमारे पड़ोगो। आठ फोर आठ फाइव तो मैं मैंने। सीटी में किसी टीम में पड़े तो लायर। ना ना तो लायर से करोगे जिस तो सीटी को रहते हो। ओ अच्छा हाँ तो मैंने हाँ तो आमिस अभी आल्टा सॉरी मैं आल्टा साउंडेशन करें हाँ सॉरी सॉरी लायर्स कोड़े मैं इस सीटी कोड़े ची मामा मिश्रा लायर्स भी Actually, sir, management portion. I am too. I mean, should be that I am prepared for it. I mean, diagnostic table management. Another day, tell me. Okay, sir. But I mean, I mean, sir, motor motor. I am going to share, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. 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 Okay.
so this was the recording uh, from the academic discussion that held in our department at the gastro radiology uh, under the guidance of dr obik sarkar sir and dr monish kumar sir uh, from now onwards every weekly we will try to have one topic which is important for resident exam to discuss and try to upload it online uh, apart from that i have not i have two cases to show you i have two cases to show with you regarding to this today's topic let me start with first case let me first present to first case okay now see yeah so this is a patient this is a patient and that was referred to our department for ct scan uh, it's a female patient and uh, the patient actually presented with the abdominal distension presented basically with the abdominal distension as you can see that uh, there is fluid collection intrapituitary fluid collection or ascites so patient basically presented with that complaint only so we performed the ct scan and so as this case is related to this topic that's why i am showing this case can you see that uh, this is an this is the 20 second image this is the 20 second image and this is the 35 second image that means this is early arterial phase this is 35 second or some people say arterial portal phase or portal venous phase whatever so 20 second this is 35 second and we have also delayed image 65 second also so first see in the early arterial phases in the 20 second can you see that there are innumerable lesion can you see there are innumerable lesions which is distributed throughout the both liver both the lobes of the liver left lobe as well as the right lobe and this lesion is peripherally enhancing can you see the enhancement this is the lesion is a peripherally enhancing with central necrosis that means it is early arterial ring pattern of enhancement followed by at 35 of second you can pretty well see that these lesions are retaining the contrast also so 20 seconds enhancement 35 second contrast is also seen let's see at the 65 second also the delayed phase can pretty well see that these lesion are still retaining its peripheral contrast that means there is no wash out in this contrast so to put it together i can see that there are multiple innumerable lesions which is present all around the liver which is enhancing with the ring pattern at arterial phase and retains its contrast in portal venous and delayed phases so these are the examples of hypervascular metastasis to liver number one point number two point you can pretty well see that there here the liver margin is not regular it is quite bit irregular along with that the patient has ascites also all this is indicating that there is a underlying chronic liver disease also third point if you can see that compared to left low compared to left low this right low this is the portal vein let me zoom it for you yeah this is the main portal vein this is the main portal vein this is the main portal vein is going just trace the portal vein portal vein portal vein portal vein and now it is getting bifurcate it is getting bifurcate into left branch and right branch you can see that the right branch of portal vein is definitely narrowed as compared to left branch and it is not fully traceable up to the margin so what i want to say that right portal vein is attenuated compared to its left part and resulting in the atrophy of the right lobe of the liver now although no specific thrombus was noted in the visualized part of portal vein so in this case this are is a, this are this is a case or example of a hypervascular metastasis which is noted 
in all around the liver now i have discussed today in today's class that what are the causes of hypervascular metastasis for example this is the renal cell carcinoma second is melanoma third is choriocarcinoma etc but in this patient i we i can see that i can show you the kidneys are clear so renal cell carcinoma is not a possibility and patient doesn't have any typical features of melanoma also we perform uh, hrcd thorax also uh, i don't have the image of that hrcd thorax and the neck portion of this patient but while doing the hrcd thorax and neck portion we found some calcified coarsely calcified mass in the thyroid region till now the case is under evaluation we are not sure whether the coarsely calcified mass lesion that have found in the thyroid region whether these they are carcinoma or not we will check it further but there can be a possibility that it is a metastasis from a thyroid although it is not that much of common but thyroid metastasis usually become hypervascular and if it is the patient has really a carcinoma of thyroid then there is a pretty well possibility that it can happen metastasis from thyroid although metastasis from thyroid into the liver is not that common so the case is still under review but i just want to show you these cases uh, as we are discussing the topic of a hypervascular metastasis in liver so this is the example of a hypervascular metastasis this was case number 1 now coming to second case second case is actually just today's morning case only this patient again was referred to our department for evaluation of this lesion so before coming to this ecd i just giving you a giving you a background of this patient this patient is a bit pretty young this patient this patient is pretty young woman her age is around 24 years you can see that her age is around 24 years and this patient do not have any history or any history of hepatocellular carcinoma in previous in past or any family history of hepatocellular carcinoma also now say so you can see that the liver margin you can see that liver margin is pretty well regular and the enhancement pattern of the liver is pretty well normal that is homogeneous enhancement so i am ruling out any cirrhotic pathology in this liver number 1 number 2 whether this patient has hepatitis b virus infection or not we are, we are not sure because that serological marker has not been performed yet we advise the patient to perform the serological marker for hepatitis b virus and also the alpha fetoprotein and but now see the imaging finding you can see that there is this portion you can see that this there is a hyper and this the image which, which you are showing is a 20 second arterial phase arterial phase image you can pretty well see that there is arterial hypervascularity of the mass lesion and definitely it is a non ring pattern of arterial phase hyper enhancement no apg followed by in venous phase that mean delayed phase i am not sure whether you can appreciate or not but this lesion is hypo enhancing compared to the normal liver parenchyma that means i want to say that the contrast material has washed out so in arterial phase hyper enhancement non ring pattern of hyper enhancement followed by wash out in portal venous and delayed phases with you can see the tuft of vessels is also there some amount of neo angiogenesis which is indicating so there is a high possibility of that it can be a hepatocellular carcinoma but there is a big question i told you you should always suspect hepatocellular carcinoma in a background of number one if the liver is cirrhotic pathology second if the patient is a known case of chronic hepatitis b surface infection third if the patient has a prior history of hepatocellular carcinoma i mean family history 
of hepatocellular carcinoma in that case only i mean there have to be have some cirrhotic background or these factors in a non cirrhotic liver hepatocellular carcinoma is highly unlikely i know that but everything can happen in medical field although this patient whether he had hepatitis b surface or antigen positive i mean hepatitis b surface infection or not this has not been yet clear because we have asked the patient to perform that investigation but if the patient comes for the hepatitis b surface being positive then there can be a chance that it the lesion turn out to a hepatocellular carcinoma but even if it doesn't come positive hepatitis b virus then also the if you just consider the morphological appearance of the lesion mass lesion it is uh, closely following the features of a hepatocellular carcinoma although the contradictory feature is the liver margin is smooth and there is no cirrhotic background definitely and no positive family history also second you cannot use i told you, you cannot use lyrats criteria in three cases number one cases if the patient age is less than 18 years number one number two if the patient doesn't have the risk factors like if the patient of cirrhotic or hepatitis b nothing like that and third you cannot use the lyrats criteria in a vascular causes like bacheri syndrome or myeloproliferative disorders so in this patient this patient doesn't have cirrhosis i can say whether this patient can is hepatitis b virus positive or not i don't know that but even if i just cite it down for the time being for the sign because this patient i just want to share this case that's why otherwise this evaluation of this patient is yet to complete but if you just measure the lesion in venous space approximately the lesion measure 8 by 9 cm that means it is more than 2 cm and definitely there is arterial phase non rim pattern of enhancement followed by non rim pattern of washout so all these features is highly suspicious of hepatocellular carcinoma and if hepatitis b virus come positive we can put it in lr5 also so although i saw that non cirrhotic liver hepatocellular carcinoma is not common not didn't happen but as you can see that it's also a rare case it this case actually just came to our department today morning also only just before this lecture being recorded and i just it's a coincident and just, that's why i just want to share it with you so hope uh, we have got some knowledge from this today's lecture and if you have any feedback i know that in some places i had humble little but the input which i or which we got from dr kovik sarkar sir and dr manish kumar sir they are just a practical teaching points uh some discussion have not been provided in this recording but after the classes actually there was some also some basic points so from uh, next week also we'll try to upload one video in each week uh, let's see and try to follow the classes hopefully it will be beneficial for your exam for radiology residents thank you very much wish you a good night